Hi guys, welcome back to Phase Mods. Uh, today you can see uh, I'm working pretty much in the future. I'm gonna just start with welcome back, you know, uh, to the channel. My name's Drew, by the way. It's been in my bio for quite a few number of years now on YouTube. But anyway, uh, we're getting into PowerShell programming today. Um, this can be used uh, for PS3 or PlayStation or whatever you want to do in, in regards to outside of the SDK if you wanted to, you know, write your own uh, custom encryption or whatever or obfuscation uh, for your your program. But uh, today I'm just going to be going over how to set up uh, ISC and just getting started with PowerShell and understanding the language. Uh, it's, it's it, There is a lot to it. Um, there's quite a bit you can do with this language. Uh, I thought it was primitive when I was first learning it, but um, as I found out, as I you know progressed uh, through the language, that it is pretty advanced. You can do some pretty incredible things. Uh, think of PowerShell as the language that runs Windows. Like everything you can do within Windows, uh, you can do in PowerShell. Literally everything. So um, just keep that in mind when you're when you're thinking about when how you want to use the language. Everything you can do, you can do. Uh, you know through the the GUI, the you know graphic user interface, or you can just do it through PowerShell, um, and it'll run whatever you're trying to do. Normally, as a human, it would do it instantly. So, uh, anyway, just keep that in mind. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and go through our topics, though. So first, uh, PowerShell ISC. So uh, to run PowerShell scripts, typically you're gonna have to bypass what's called execution policy. Um, execution policy is defaulted on your computer as disabled, I think. Um, I can't remember uh, for all versions of Windows, but I know like if you're if you're on a basic version of Windows, or if you're not like on professional or enterprise, or even I think even enterprise has it disabled. Uh, you have to enable those features in order to actually execute uh, PowerShell scripts. So uh, we need to keep that in mind as we're you know thinking about how we're going to uh, set up our ISC. So to set up ISC, uh, it's it's super simple. Most of it's uh, already done for you. So you can go to PowerShell, you can type PowerShell down here, go to ISC. You can run this either as an administrator, which I recommend if you're planning on executing the actual scripts you're writing. But if you're just writing, you can just write them in normal ISC. But to execute, yeah, you'll have to run as administrator. So go ahead, run as administrator. It'll open like this. It won't have any, it'll just have two empty tabs in here. I just have tabs because I've just been writing. But yeah, it'll look like this. Um, except you won't have a theme. If you want to have a theme, uh, you can go to tools, options, and then you go to general fonts or co uh, colors and fonts, sorry, and then go to manage themes. And then you can import your own. Um, you can get uh, custom themes if you want. Uh, I have a, this one, it just looks like Visual Studios. Just made it easier on my eyes when I was writing, so. Just keep that in mind. You can get custom themes if you want. Uh, I'll link down below uh, the in the description of the video for uh, themes for ISC if you guys want to go check them out. Um, and then you would just click apply, and that's it. It would set up your theme. Um, so then, yeah, uh, this has like you know the green when you comment things out, um, but it also has you know like uh, when you write function functions, it'll like change the colors or whatever. So. Uh, that's that. So anyway, um, that that's basically all you need for ISC. Uh, up here, you can set like where you want the console output to be, or if you don't want to have a console output type of deal. Uh, but I've just put it on the bottom, so it's it reminds me of Visual Studios in a way. It's an easy setup for me. It just works. So that's what I use. Um, uh, that's the basics of it. So really, if you want to. Um, if you, if you weren't aware before, when you run a, a PowerShell script for the first time, uh, it's going to like prompt you with a box. Are you sure you want to run this? Just check. I don't want to see this again. And then click yes, uh, basically, because when you're running executions on this, you're going to be doing it a lot. Um, so anyway, uh, run script. You can use F5, right? Uh, if you want to run just a selection, a selection of code is like if you were to have like two active um let's see i'll just write some basic code for you really quick this right host just outputs data um this is text all right and then if we were to do right host below it all right and then new line this is also text 
If you were to run this, press play. Could not find part. Why will it save file? Hang on one sec. I think I got a weird error. It's trying to. It's trying to save this document. Oops. Some temp. I put everything in my temp folder. It's just me. You don't have to do that. That's just what I do. Um, okay. Save. Yes. All right. That's because I put it in a new folder. I forgot. All right. So anyway, if we do uh, run, you can see outputs, two outputs here. But if you were to just do like highlight one and then just click run selected, it's only going to run that selected stuff that you highlighted. Um, so just keep that in mind when you're switching between the two. This one uses F8. This one uses F5. So if you don't want to have to go up here and click play every time and you just want to press F5, uh, it does make processing quite a bit faster. But anyway, all right. So that's that uh, just for the beginning, uh, just in regards to um, uh, the basic like GUI of, of, uh, of ISC. So uh, yeah, there's just, you know, it's, it's pretty basic. There's not a lot to it here. Uh, a couple things to note though, uh, the command window. So if we show command window, like we can show it in an external window like this if we want. Uh, and this allows us to go through like all the commands that exist in PowerShell that you could use for anything, all right? Um, but then there's also one built into the GUI itself, like right here. So it's, it would shrink your, your little work area, but also it's right here. Uh, you can go through modules. There's tons of different stuff. I leave it in all, uh, all just so I can access anything I need. But yeah, right host is in here. Um, and if you want to look and see what right host does, it'll tell you like, these are the different arguments you can use and stuff. So if you were like writing this out, uh, and then you were just like, uh, put a string. So it doesn't show you here. Um, but, uh, yeah, there's the first like common parameters. These are like, uh, they're called like pipeline variables basically. So, or, or there is one, this pipeline variable, but these are common. These exist in like every PowerShell command there is error action and all this stuff, different type of stuff that you could do. Uh, but the, the main ones that are specific to this are right here. And uh, so obviously when you're writing hosts, the first one is just going to be a string because you're trying to write data out. So output, right? Next would be, you can do dash and this will show you like everything that exists um, for, that's available for this function, but it's also over here, right? So foreground color would like change the color of it. You press space on that and it'll actually show you a list of like colors you can use. So if I want to do like green, all right. And then if I did like no new line um, or something like that, or separator, if I, it, depending on what I'm trying to print, you know, type of deal. Background color, if I put this as like uh, white, all right, it's gonna like have a different background color. So when I run this, it has a background color of white and a front color of red or green. So it's kind of hard to read, but if I were to use like black, there you go. Now you could read it better, all right, so. Uh, there's just like different customizations you can do type of deal. Uh, but yeah, that's like understanding just like the beginning of, uh, uh arguments and stuff like that. Um, uh, sorry to skip ahead there, but that's also how you can use ISE to benefit you in, in ways. Uh, but anyway, uh, so let's jump into this. So global variables. All right. Um, uh, so when it comes to global variables, uh, you're typically going to use them across different functions. Um, and it's one variable usually that defines, that's being defined like all the way down your script, right? You're using it all over the place, but you're only defining it once type of deal. Um, you can use the global, uh, signature here to define what it's going to be if you want. Or you can just keep it outside of any function, like at the top of your script or something. It doesn't actually have to be at the top. It could be at the bottom. Uh, that's the difference kind of between PowerShell and like uh, C++ is that it doesn't really matter where you put the definition on the page. It will find it um, versus like having it above, you know, certain areas. Uh, so that in that way, it's kind of beneficial. But uh, yeah, you can use global and then we could use like string. This can be named literally anything. All right. You can have this be whatever you want. Um, 
whatever you want, like equals, and then, you know, uh, code, right? So I'll just comment it out. This is how you write a comment, by the way. Uh, and it's just telling us right here, oh, you must provide an expression, right? Da da da, because you said equals. You could just be like obj, just object. Doesn't doesn't mean anything right now because you haven't defined what object is. But yeah, uh, so this is a comment. All right. Uh, so yeah. Anyway, let's global variables. That's basically how you would do it. Uh, we'll talk more about global variables in a minute when we start implementing like functions. Uh, as it'll just make more sense uh, but anyway so if this is a comment all right single line uh, comment all right that's how you write it all right and then as you can see above where our little intro is uh, this is a multi-line so in here is like a, a multi-line comment uh, all right so that's like how you would do it all right um, Let's see, if I wanted to do uh, like uh, process variables, right? So things that are going to be defined in a certain way that require a specific process. So you, you guys, if you've followed my tutorials in the past for C++, you know that there's variables that do certain things like void uh, runs things once type of deal unless it's ran in a loop. Bool is usually a switch like on or off, right? Um, for there's like it's a for loop type of deal you can use it to make loops uh, things they'll just run constantly through an array or something like that um, but yeah then there's like uh, different types like string will just give you a plain text type of deal unless you define it to do a, a specific thing but uh, there's like different ones like secure string which will give you like it'll put a string in numbers uh, it'll just like encrypt it type of deal um, in that sense it's not really encrypting it's just kind of convert converting is what it is but uh, but yeah there's there's a ton of different ones uh, and you can look up there's tons of documentation on Microsoft's website for PowerShell in regards to variables and understanding the different ones which I would recommend you know digging through and really trying to understand it uh, if you're not like super familiar with variables and how they work all right, so then we have like custom variables. So uh, in my C++ class, I taught, a, I taught people how to use like buffers and stuff like that. Custom variables can be anything. They can be numbers, arrays, strings, like anything. They can be buffers, it doesn't matter. They can be used to have a storage space. They can be used to be a pointer to a storage bit. Like there's tons of different things. So you could just do custom variable, all right, equals, and it's bringing up custom key for me because I've been writing a lot of code today and it's all stored in the cache for IC. So um, anyway, so custom var, custom variable, right? Um, and then this can be literally anything. You could use this as um, read post and then prompt enter uh, data here, all right? And then if you were to run this, it would say, look, enter data here, blah, 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 blah. You like type some random stuff in and it would store it in this variable. So whatever you typed in there, it will get stored in here. All right. Is that hopefully that kind of makes sense uh, somewhat anyway. Uh, but yeah, that's that's like the type of thing you could use a storage space for. But you can also use this as like uh, one plus uh one plus two right you could like store this variable which is obviously going to be uh you know fucking three uh it's going to be stored in here right so if you wanted to like store a number in here right and you can make this some really advanced mathematical equation if you wanted to but that's also a way you can store like a number in here all right so anyway that's just something to keep in mind. Like you can use this for a ton of different things, right? This could easy, easily be used as equals, and then you could write an entire function out. Uh, you know. Uh, yep. And then whatever this function does is stored in here. All right. So there's like a ton of different ways you could use a custom variable. All right. So, uh, so far we've gone over 
uh, setting up ISC, global process, and custom variables. All right. Now we're going to write a static function. This is just going to do something basic. It's not going to require any um, uh, custom inputted variables, which we'll talk about in a minute uh, as we start writing the function out. But this is just a basic static function. You run the script and it just does something. All right. We'll make it output on the output window because that'll just help people. Uh, but, but yeah, we, uh, anyway, so we'll get started. But, uh, the first thing I want to do is I want to put CLS. CLS means clear screen. Okay. So if you use clear screen and you run this, it's just going to clear the output window. So I just want it to clear the screen every time before the script runs. That will just remove any previous data that we had there and keep things pretty organized for us in our, in our look at our output. All right. So I'm going to use CLS. Uh, that's just a function you can use both in command prompt and in PowerShell. It's just a, a console command. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and just write a function and we'll name this, uh, output data. All right. And we're not going to add any, uh, custom inputted variables. That would be like, if we wanted to go in here and be like string and then some some data or something like that we'll, we'll talk about that later we'll do that in our dynamic function which we'll do next but for now we're just gonna leave that alone we're gonna put our brackets all right um, and we don't have to specify parentheses if we don't want to if you guys want to like if you're c plus plus developers and you find that to be you know easy to remember just to do it that way it's like a force of habit type of deal it's, it's okay it's not a big deal it doesn't matter which way you do it uh, you don't have to have the parentheses though if you're not um, supplying variables up there global variables to the function right all right so nice all right so let's roll into this let's just say um, we'll call this uh, three equals um, one plus two all right and then we'll just do if and then we'll just do some basic thing like if three equals and you can look up all these different things in here all right the dashes there's uh this is equal to case sensitive this is equal to um in regards to yeah if the if the so this is if the left equals the right and this is if the right equals the left uh, so this can be used for like really advanced stuff. But anyway, so we're going to use that and we're going to use three. All right. And then in here, we're going to write just some output. I'm just going to put like write host. Or even we could use like, if we wanted to use return statements, we could use like a result here. Equals. Um three if we wanted to or we could do it in a string we'll call it three all right uh, it doesn't matter how you do it it'll still output it correctly and then if we want to do like return here and then we want to return result all right so and then we could also do like an else statement all right and then in here we could do uh, result um, equals uh, just like not found or something I don't know all right whatever you want to do there and then we just return the result all right now if we want to call this function to run it in our script because if we just press play right now uh, it's not going to do anything see it's not outputting any data because we're not actually calling this we need to call it so down below we do output data all right because that's our only function and then if we run this you can see it outputted three all right because one plus two equals three three equals three if three equals three result is three right so anyway that's uh that's that's you know one way you can use a a variable a custom variable to make a static function all right and this outputs on the uh, console here. You can also make this do like a custom output if you wanted to. If you wanted to be like uh, final or uh, 
equation, you could do like equation finished with result. All right. And then it would tell you uh, the result. So equation finished with result three. All right. So this is just a static function. It's not doing anything crazy. It's, you know, it's still running some, you know, equation that you wrote, but it's not, it's not doing a whole lot. Um, and it doesn't have any custom, well, it has one custom variable, but it's defined within the function, not as a global um, to that function. All right, so that's good. We're gonna leave that here uh, as uh, static. We're gonna make a comment, static function. All right, it's nice. And in here, I'm just gonna call this uh, static function. All right. And then obviously we have to change the name here or else we're not calling the function. Right. And I'm going to change this and just make it static equation finished with the result. All right. So, cause we're going to write another function and I want to be able to be able to figure out the difference between the two. All right. Nice. Um, so it doesn't really matter how you start writing the next part. You can start writing another function here if you want, or if you want all of the stuff that you're calling to be below it, uh, then you can write a function like this and then call it down below and have both things, both places that you're calling below all of where you're actually writing your functions. That might be helpful in regards to like how you manage your code and how you keep it, uh, organized. So. Anyway, we're going to keep going. So here we're going to do our dynamic uh, function. All right. And here I'm going to supply some variables. So first one I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go up here uh, below the CLS. And I'm just going to do global. And then I'm going to call this str. This is just going to be string. All right. You can write, you can write it out if you want. It doesn't matter. Uh, and then in here, I'm going to put read host. All right. And prompt, cause I want to be able to see what, uh, I want to be able to have a custom prompt on the, on the output window. So I know what I'm typing in and here I'm going to put, um, let's put, um, content to convert, I guess. All right. We're going to convert some content, I guess this is what we're going to do here. Uh, and even then we could do, we could say string to convert. Uh, and we'll do like to array, All right? All right, down here, we're gonna use global str, all right? And you don't actually have to define it in here because we're it's, it's defined up above. Uh, so actually I'm just gonna leave that empty and we'll just use that global from up above. But I'm also gonna put in here for variables because I said I was going to. I'll put a bool. And I'll just do uh, uh, convert to, all right? And then I'm gonna do another one. Bool convert, oops, convert from, all right? So now we're working with some bulls. All right, so in here we're gonna do, uh, let's say we wanted to do, uh, we're gonna do some if statements, right? Cause we gotta, we gotta, we gotta we're gonna be using bulls. Uh, convert to, all right. Oops, all right, nice. So convert to, all right. And we're gonna say, um, let's see if convert to, we're going to use, um, just uh, final string equals. All right. And then convert to, so here we would need to use the assembly name, uh, the assembly function, or I guess library at that point class, I would say, um, convert. And then in here we can use like a ton of different things. So, uh, this is, this is uh, what we're going to use to, to actually convert to something else, right? So, and actually, that's one way we could do it. I'm actually going to try, I'm going to do it a different way. So let's do, first, let's make a variable for our global. So let's just call this string 
equal uh, sting equals and then our global all right so now we've defined string as our global and we can use it inside of our function like this so now i'm going to do uh string uh to chare all right so I just want to convert to char array, all right? So whatever the string was, it's now going to a char array, basically. Um, there we go. And now we're going to just do final string equals, and then our string, all right? And that's if we're converting to, all right? Makes sense? All right, so now if we want to do if, and then convert from, oops. All right, so when we're converting from, uh, there's actually quite a bit of code uh, that we have to do. So I'm actually gonna show you a previous script that I wrote um, in regards to converting from. So my personal scripts here, make key. Uh, this is just custom encryption that I wrote a while ago. Um, but anyway, so actually been writing in the last couple of weeks. So if we go to look at our char right here, right? Here it is. And then if we want to reverse it, we have to use system array reverse, and then we have to join it back. I'm going to explain this all to you in a second so it makes sense. Um, but we're going to basically, I'm going to take these three lines of code and I'm going to break them down for you. All right, so let's just look at this for a moment. Uh, don't look at anything that's commented out. We're just going to focus on one line at a time. All right, so first off, we have system.array. So system is its own class, array is its own class, okay? system array is is found inside of system all right now there's functions in this class and one of them is called reverse all right so we're going to use reverse to uh we got to change our uh our variables here so let me use our global variable that we're using all right so we're using string right whatever's inputted so i'm gonna put that in here all right and I'm going to join it. All right. So basically, yeah, system and an array. Those are classes. All right. Now on to the next part. The function in that class is reverse. All right. We're using reverse to actually um, reverse the string. So we're going to like uh, if this is the string forwards, uh, FFD, right? If that's a string that's forwards to reverse it would be to do DFF. All right. We're going to reverse it. Um, you don't have to do this necessarily, but let's just say, uh, I guess, I guess technically we don't have to do that at all if we don't want to reverse. Um, if we don't want to use reverse, yeah, we'll just take reverse out for now just to keep things simple. All right. I was going to go more advanced, but I'm jumping ahead. So, all right, let's go here and we'll just call this. Um, so this is just OBJ one. It's just some random thing, right? This can just be anything. All right. And then in here, we're using activator. All right, activator is another class. All right, you can go look those up. There's a ton of different documentation on Microsoft website for all the different classes and understanding them. All right, uh, it's, so this is a class. Inside of it has a function, create instance. You can also go look up what that does. Um, and then in here, it has some arguments. Create instance has arguments, all right? So if we wanted to see what those arguments were, you know, we could just do, I'm just gonna use random for now equals and then just write this out for you all right and then in here we have like all the different types of functions that are in this class right so then create instance all right and if you want to take your time and actually really figure it out you can do uh just scroll down to where create instance is and it'll show you all of the arguments that exist for it don't get like too worried about how much is here and how much is like blowing up in your face just look at the top all right and you see, uh, if we go back to it, uh, type type. So it's right here, it's literally just telling you we need to type. So whatever you want to convert to, all right? And then system reflection binding flags, all right? So let's go back to this real quick. Flags, binding, attribute, all right? And then there's a ton of other ones, you know, system object, args. There's a ton of, ton of them. All right, so these are all the different types that you can use. 
So obviously the first type it's asking is what you want to convert to. All right, basically it's saying, how, how, what, what do you want me to do with this? All right, we want it to become a string. All right, that's how we wrote it down below. And then we say what, what it is currently. So right now uh, it's currently a char array, right? So that's just what the object is. Um, if we're converting from, right? So if we've already converted to in our custom variable somewhere, and I'll show you how to do this later, basically we just have to remember that we're converting from now, and then we have to put in our object, right? So in here, I'm just gonna use our uh, global again, all right? And uh, yeah, so, and actually this is where we wanna use a custom variable, not our global variable this is I'll, I'll explain this to you in a minute so let's just do uh, char array and then we'll do custom array custom char array how about that all right all right nice and now down here we're gonna use custom char array all right and we got to close this right because it's still part of a function create instance all right now we can delete this um, and then we're going to use here, we're going to use, we don't need our string anymore. Uh, and here we'll use uh, final string because that's what we're going to return. See how we have it up here, final string, return, if convert to, if convert from. We're just going to use the same uh, name so we can just return the same object. All right. But yeah. All right. So final string equals activator, create instance. We're converting from a char array to a string. All right. And then after that, we want to use this new line down here. Um, here, we'll just use, yeah, we'll leave it as final string. We're also gonna change this to final string. All right, so once it's done uh, converting it there, we're using it again to actually define it now. So new object, all right? So let's not focus on this line of code anymore. New object, all right? New object says, okay, you're telling the system, this is a new object now. It is something that it, different than what it was before all right the data on it doesn't change all right but the type changes all right so now we're officially defining it as a system dot string all right so that's that's what we're changing it to we're making it a system dot string what's written out hasn't changed but what is defined behind it so that the system knows what it is is what is changing all right so here up here you make the conversion so that it can be something uh so it can be a string and then here you're saying this is what it is now all right so i don't want you to get confused by those lines but that's basically what's happening there all right feel free to pause the video at any time if i'm going too fast or whatever and and rewatch a section but uh yeah let's go ahead and keep going so there we go now we have our convert from all right and here we're going to use return again all right and what do you think we're going to return? Yeah, our final string. All right. So, and we could put this in a custom, uh, you know, uh, freaking, what is it? What is it called? Oh, I don't even know why I copied that. Let's just do uh, dynamic uh, equation, uh, dynamic function, uh, finished with result. All right. And for us, I'm going to do a new line because this is probably going to be something big in the event you, you type something big. To do a new line, you just use that, uh, whatever that key is right above tab. You don't do shift. You just do the, the regular thing. I can't, can't remember what it's called. Apostrophe? I don't even know. Anyway, um, I think it's apostrophe. But anyway, uh, and then N. All right. It's similar to how you do it in C++, right? When you guys use backslash n, except it's apostrophe n, all right? So just keep that in mind. It just makes a new line in the console. All right, nice. So nice. I'm gonna just do that. And I'm actually gonna put a new line up here as well, all right? I got rid of the space because when you put it on a new line, if you have a space, there's like, it's actually gonna be a space and then whatever you print. So I just remove the space and put that, all right? Cool, so next, um, I think we're good to go other than we need to call our function, right? So down below here, 
we have now new arguments that we need to supply. So uh, in here, if we do dash, we now have the arguments for the for the variables we supplied up here uh, that we need to we need to actually add. So if we want to convert to right, let's convert to uh, it's a bool, so we need to set this to true. All right, and if you don't know what it is, if you start typing it, true comes right up. This is part of the PowerShell libraries. All right, convert to, and then that's it, right? We don't need to supply anything else because we're using our global variable here, which up here is reading from host. All right, so once you've uh, decide to go with convert to you don't have to supply anything else now if we wanted to go to convert from function all right convert from we would have to put in here true and then we have to supply a custom char array all right and in here we would use our variable all right so uh, but we don't have one yet because we don't have a char array what we could do is say uh, char array equals, and then we could use this because we know it's going to be a char array. All right. Now we're going to print both of these just so we can see what they do. All right. So here I'm going to put, uh, so if we weren't, um, let's see. Yep. All right. Nice. So we'll just work with that and see, see how this goes. Um, but, all right, so we're storing in there. Yep. All right. So for now, I'm actually going to just remove this so you can see what the char array looks like. And we're just going to run this. So string to convert to array. So we could just put any random string in here. Just put this is a string. You know, or you can put spaces or whatever if you want. It doesn't really matter. I'm I'm just putting it like this for now. We could do this is a string. Alright. And now it just gave you the output. So this this is what an array looks like on an output here. Alright. It's vertical. Because each of these well the three is its own thing, but the rest of this is is the array. Alright. So it, it kinda looks crazy. But that's what an array looks like when you print it. All right. And then dynamic function finished with the result. So there you go. It shows you what it printed with uh, afterwards. All right. So it used what you inputted and this is what it converted it to. All right. So anyway, that's just uh, our little method here. Uh, now, if we want to convert from, all right, we'll just do array equals and then dynamic. And I'm going to comment this guy out for now, just because I don't want to see that three on there. Dynamic function convert from set it to true. And sometimes uh, you won't get like this to show up right away. And it's just because you're working so fast through ISC. If you just backspace or just take your time, let ISC load a little bit. Uh, and then it, you'll see your stuff again. All right, so I'm going to call this array. All right. And now if we run this, we should be able to get whatever it is. This uh, string underscore test. Alright, and if we run this, okay, so we have an error. Alright, this is good. I finally wanted to get an error. Alright, cannot process argument transformation on parameter custom array. Cannot convert value of type dynamic function finished with result. Alright, so two type system.char error. String must be exactly one character long. Alright, so um, they're, they're not wrong here. So when you're converting to an array, um, you technically make each individual character one part of the array like it's one uh, one object in the array and then that's uh, that's its own separate object the next letter all right so this does make sense the way it's saying it um, so anyway uh, I think 
I don't, I'm not sure. Let's do string test. Yeah, no, it's going to give you the same error. All right. So, um, basically it's because we're not, uh, because what we're inputting here isn't technically an array yet. Um, all right. So it's, it's strange, but, uh, that's sometimes how, how you have to work it. So when you inside the function, if you don't have this as an array yet, you know, it's, it's defined here as an array, but it actually isn't storing anything until you input some data to it. So we inputted this to it, right? And, uh, and it still uh, fails because it's looking for it up here in this process, but it, it's, it's not happening at the right time. So one character long, if we try to just do uh, a, look, same thing, right? So it's just gonna, you're gonna get very confused by this. So if we look at like, yeah, line 53, all right? Custom char array. So that's that's where you get a failed uh, type attempt, all right? And I don't think I can add error actions here, no. It's because I didn't specify any yet. All right. So this is what errors look like. And you're going to have to like work through them on your own and just kind of like slowly try to figure them out type of deal. But uh, it will it will come to you eventually and uh, you'll be able to figure it out. Uh, for this tutorial here, I'm actually just going to leave this like this. And if you want to work on this script and fix the error, uh, I, I challenge you to do it because it's not hard to fix. But uh, it, it does require some some code to be added so uh, that's why i i set some of these things up the way they do i show you how it would work and then i show you how it would break and i need you to just see if you can work through it yourself all right nice right, so that's pretty much that all right uh, we've started with you know our, our variables our static and dynamic functions we're slowly working our way through arrays understanding arrays right and then we've also worked on output. We know how to output data, um, either return it or use write host uh, to return it um, to the console. All right, understanding the libraries. All right, so I'm gonna work through the libraries with you right now. So uh, just give me a sec. I'm just gonna clear this console output and we're gonna go through the libraries. So if we go to uh, either the command window and then we just look at all of our libraries here uh, these are all different types of functions that exist in libraries all right but if you want to see the actual documentation themselves uh, what you have to do is let's open a new file explorer we're going to go to our c drive all right we're going to go to windows and we're going to go to system 32 all right and then we're going to scroll to the bottom of all the folders before you get to the files uh, we're in the a's there we go so if we go to Windows PowerShell version 1.0, all right, and then we can look in here. Um, this is just where PowerShell is installed at. But if we go to modules, this is all the libraries, all right. So in here, you can look at like specific like um, libraries and see what they're doing. You want to look at the PSM one. That's the PowerShell module, all right. And uh, basically, yeah. So uh, if I wanted to open this file, I'm just going to copy the path file open paste all right and then if I wanted to look at the actual module to see what was going on and see how things are used this is how I would look through that documentation all right so yeah you can look if you want to get really in depth with your code take a look and see how functions are running um, in order to better understand what you're calling and for what purpose it's used for all right all right, so that's libraries and then the basic console and PowerShell predefined functions. All right, so there's console functions like CLS that exist. All right, there's other ones like DIR. This will show you a directory uh, and we're in a lot of directories right now uh, because we're, or there's a lot of files in here because we're in system 32. But if we wanted to go to a different directory, we could use control directory CD. All right, and then we can do like C temp. All right, and then directory. And this would show us like all the files that exist in the temp folder right now. Uh, if we want to go into the tutorial one, we go in further. So we could go um, extra CD tutorials. Oh, doesn't not found. All right, so if we scroll up, all right, we see we don't have a tutorials folder here, but we have a YouTube folder here. So if I just do that, do CD, if I just double click it, Control C and then Control V. 
Alright, and then CD tutorials. And then DIR. This will show us the scripts that we're in right now. This is where these two are stored. Alright, so this is how you can migrate around to different um, uh, sections of your computer right from console. All right, you can also do this in the scripts. So like how you have CI, uh, CLS here, you can also have like uh, custom directory and I'm just gonna name it that. And then you could do uh, DIR and C temp, all right? And you could call this anything, right? You could name this temp folder. All right, and then so whenever this is read by your script down below, it's gonna go to this directory all right, it's gonna read that directory. All right, and you could also do things like this, backslash, and then a star, and that's gonna say find everything in C temp. All right, and then you're saying like all of temp folder, all of temp folder, right? So you're saying find everything in there. Maybe you're using that down below in your function or something like that. That's just like different ways you can use basic console commands to do that type of stuff for you. All right, so. I uh, hope this tutorial was helpful. All right. Uh, this is just one of many I'm going to do in the future. I just wanted to start off as basic as I could uh, so uh, I didn't lose anybody. But uh, I hope this you know video you know, gets some popularity. If it does, uh, cool. We'll continue on the series. So give it some love. Uh, show me what you guys think. If you want to see something different, leave it in the comment down below. And uh, we'll work through it. I know Python. I know PowerShell. I know C++, C hash, uh, regular C. GCC, uh, we can do some uh, reverse engineering if you guys want to get into that with IDA and stuff like that, uh, Gehydra or whatever else. Uh, just let me know down in the comments what you want to see. If this video was interesting to you, uh, let's continue on the series because uh, this, this is a huge language and it has a lot to it and we can get really in depth. So uh, anyway, for now, take care and I'll see you guys.